Foundations of Success number three, personal development, overview. Getting out of your comfort zone. Personal development is all about breaking free of your current comfort zone. Your comfort zone will eventually kill you. The goal then is to break free, to be strengthened by that process of breaking free in order to face the new world and its new potential, and then to stretch, to persist, and to experience new growth. If you really want to make something happen, you've got to make it happen every day. Make up your mind that when you get up in the morning, that you're going to do it better today than you've done it before. Today will be a day of improvement and building. You're not only going to do it better than the day before, but today you're going to do it the best way. You're going to do it in a certain way. But what you should also realize is that while the certain way is the best way for now, there's always still a better way. What's best today is not necessarily best tomorrow. It's always changing and there's always an opportunity for improvement and growth. So you have to keep looking and you have to keep improving yourself, hence personal development. A formal education earns you a job. Self-education, however, earns you a fortune. Formal education will earn you wages, but self-education will make you rich. This is personal development. This does not belittle formal education. Where else would you start but just don't stop there? Life change doesn't start or end with motivation or inspiration. Life change starts with education. It is carried by motivation and inspiration. And if you don't educate yourself on your desires and goals, you'll quickly burn out with little more than a memory of the things you wish to accomplish. Indeed, education is the great spark that ignites all flames. Inspiration, then, is the wind that fans it. And motivation is the kindling that it devours. Never be stuck with wind and wood but no spark. Wisdom is not invested in labor, it's wasted. Faith, not invested in labor, is also wasted. Set a goal then to become a millionaire, not for the money, but for what it will make of you in order to become a millionaire. Success is something that you attract by the person that you become. It's not something you pursue, it's something that pursues you when you become the right kind of person. Therefore, seek to become the right kind of person. Do certain things in certain ways. Be a successful person even before you find success, and success will find you. This is the great law. Circumstances don't make the man. They simply reveal him to himself. It's not your problems that define you. It's how you deal with them. Likewise, it's not your position in life or the circumstances surrounding you in the present form that are your true identity. How a person chooses to handle all circumstances, scenarios, and problems is the true identity of a man. A man could be facing great challenges and problems today and may not look like much on the outside of the world because of a scenario, but how he chooses to handle and overcome those problems is a true measure of his identity. He is therefore not defined by his circumstances, but rather by his inner drive, discipline, and knowledge. Finding Success He who seeks finds. In order to find, you must search. Life reserves its treasures for those who deserve it, not for those who need it, or merely want it. You've got to study. You've got to want to figure something out. Study it. If you want to be happy, study happiness. If you want to be successful, study success. If you want to be wealthy, study wealth. Figure it out. Put effort into studying it. You've got to study. Most people walk through their life with their fingers crossed, hoping. No, you've got to study. You've got to learn and you've got to apply what you learn. Remember, for things to change, you've got to change. If you want things to be different in your life, you've got to make some change, some change to make it different. Rarely, if ever, does it just happen by accident. Rarely does life get better merely by chance. Perspective. Our lives are most affected by the way we think things are, not by the way they actually are. It's not what you get that makes you valuable as a person. It's what and whom you become. It's who you are. It's the values you develop, and it's the skills and knowledge you develop. Don't sell out in getting there just to get things. Don't give up on your principles or values and morals. Those things are what make you valuable as a human being. Anyone can earn money or buy nice things, but not everyone will be amazing. Not everyone will be great. You can be, though. Devote yourself to that. Set goals that will make something of you. There are winners and there are losers, and there are some people that just haven't figured out how to win yet. And all they need is a little guidance, a little coaching, and a little knowledge. No man should be left in poverty or hopelessness because he doesn't know how to succeed. 
So if you feel like a loser, just realize that maybe you just don't know how to win yet. You haven't figured it out and you need a little guidance along the way. That's what this course, The Foundations of Success, is about, is to teach you how to succeed, how to find success in your life and move from thinking that you are a loser to actually becoming the winner that you are and finding the success that you already have inside of you. Hence again, personal development. Self-worth. There's a big concept about self-worth that we all must learn. Successful people tend to have very high images of themselves, a very high feeling of self-worth. This is because adding value to the world around you and having a sense of purpose are two of the biggest leading factors to happiness in life. Successful people know that they have potential and they know that they can succeed. They know they are capable. They believe in themselves even when they have nothing to show for it at the moment. They know who they are. They know that they are capable and they believe in themselves completely. Hang in there when the only reward is your belief in yourself. Realize that the value is in the doer, not the deed. Give your best self to all that you do. Constant repair and innovation. You absolutely must repair life or it will decay constantly. So think on this, if you aren't growing, you're dying. If you aren't getting better, you're getting worse. This is the natural law that governs our universe and everything in it. The second law of thermodynamics, the, the universe tends towards high entropy. So are you innovating? This is a big question to ask yourself. Each year, the world innovates itself. You have access to your mind, a gold mine. One idea can make you rich. Many good ideas can drive you forward and improve your work by leaps and bounds, and ideas are free. It's the way of the world that inventions are constantly improved upon with each consecutive year. The car will be better next year than it is right now. Ideas move progress forward, which is why we see such an exponential increase in innovation and technology in recent years. So ask yourself, are you innovating? If you continue to move at the pace you currently are, what will you be earning next year? What will you wear in the year after that? Will you be staying the same or will you be constantly and continuously improving your processes? Ideas are free. Come up with good ideas to improve the way you do things and the results that you can get by doing them. Always be innovating, especially individually. Life doesn't get better by chance, it gets better by change. Life was not designed to give you what you want, life was designed to give you what you deserve. The good news is that there's a God of grace that tends to give you what you need, but what about getting what you want? You've got to earn that, you've got to work for that. That's extra on the menu and we're built to work for it and to appreciate it. People are like ships. Earl Nightingale told us that a full 95% of people are like ships without rudders, being tossed to and fro by every change in tide, every shift in wind, every wave at sea. And that is life. We all face the changing of the tide, the shifting of the wind, the waves that rock our lives. But most people drift aimlessly through life, hoping at some point that they may land in a port somewhere, a rich port somewhere. But Earl Nightingale said that for every one mile of narrow port entrance, there are 1,000 miles of rocky coastland. 5% of people in the world experience unusual success. The other 95% are fine with average, but if you learn to set your sail and steer your rudder, you can experience success yourself. In fact, that is the only way to be sure. You've got to plan your journey, know your destination, and actively and intentionally make corrections to your course along the way. Since we are in the habit of comparing people to ships, I invite you to think about a port of call. Ask any captain where their next landing will be and they can tell you. They cannot see their destination, it's not right in front of them, but they know exactly where they will be headed next, which port of call they will land in, and how they're going to get there. The captain understands that while it may not be visible for 98% of the trip, they know that if they just simply do certain things consistently, they will be sure to arrive exactly where they have set as their destination point. Problem solving. Successful people are not people without problems. They are people who have learned to solve their problems. Getting what you want from life is a matter of learning to solve the problems and stand between where we currently are and where we want to be in life. Success is like fire. You see, success is like fire. Don't focus on cold and wish there was warmth. Focus on building your fire, fanning the flames, and adding more and more wood. Focus on the results and the benefit. Do not focus on the lack. The man who tries to build a fire and can only think about how cold it is will never experience the warmth. He will lose hope too quickly and give up because the cold is only dispelled by a great fire. Until the flames are raging, the cold will overwhelm him. 
he will see only a flicker of flame and demand warmth from it, more than it is capable of producing, and in his demanding he will forget that it is he who must feed the flame. 